In this video, I want to demonstrate how you can quickly add some basic enemy movement to your game. In this demo project, I have a simple level with a character moving around. Let's add a flying enemy to our level who paces up and down. For this demo, I'm using the Pixel Platformer asset set off of Kenny's website. I'll leave a link in the description. Let's start by adding a new scene for our enemy. It's going to be a 2D scene. I'm going to call it Enemy. First, I'm going to add an animated sprite 2D. I'm going to rename mine to Sprite. And then under the animated sprite 2D, I'm going to add a area 2D and then a collision shape. I'm going to rename my area 2D to vision. And then under the area 2D, I'm going to add a collision shape 2D. And then go back up to the node 2D that I renamed mine to enemy. And then we're going to add a marker 2D. And then lastly, we're going to add an animation player. Let's start by adding in our enemy. So we'll click on your animated sprite 2D. Then we're going to go over to the inspector and go to animation. We're going to click on sprite frames and new sprite frames and then click on it. And then let's click on this little icon to add frames from a sprite sheet. It's going to be inside our assets folder. This is where the Kenny pixel platformer assets were downloaded to. Then it's going to be tile map. Then it's going to be tile map characters packed. This is the one I'm going to use. And it's nine across and then three vertical. But you can use whichever ones you'd like for the enemy. But for this demonstration, I'm going to use the flying one. So I'm going to use this guy. So I'm going to make sure I select all three of them. And then let's zoom in so we can see them. And I'm going to have mine auto start and then loop. You can start clicking play. And it's at five frames per second. You can adjust this to what you think looks best. I'm just going to put them at three. Next, go ahead and click on Collision Shape 2D, and we're just going to add a circle collision. Don't worry about adjusting the size. We're going to do that in our script. This collision shape we're not using for our herder hitbox. We're going to use this collision shape for the vision of the flying enemy so that he can turn based on where the player is. The marker 2D is just for development. I will show you when we get to the part where we're adding the enemy to the levels. But for now, let's just set the Y of the transform to negative 120. By setting the Y to negative 120, it's creating this marker here. This is going to be helpful when we're adding the enemy to our levels so we can see where the bat's going to fly up to. And the last thing we're going to do to our enemy scene before we add a script is let's click on animation player and we're going to add animation to him. Make sure your animation player is selected and then we're going to come down to this window down here. Let's click animation and then click new animation and we'll just call this fly. We're going to click add a track. It's going to be a property track and then we're going to select the sprite, the animated sprite 2D. Then we can just search for position. I want to change the position of the animated sprite. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to add the total animation time, so four seconds. I'm going to at the zero seconds, I'm going to right click on this position line and I'm going to insert a key and then click on it. And I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then I'm going to come to two seconds. Adjust this, make it exact. And then right click again and insert key. I'm going to click on the key. And then I'm going to set the Y to negative 120. And you can see he's going right up to our marker 2D. So that's what that is. That's a placeholder for us. That marker 2D will not show up in the game. That's only for development purposes. Then last, we're going to go to the four second marker. And we're going to right click, third key, click on it. And we're going to make it zero again. Flies back down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to click loop. So the animation runs continuously. And then I'm going to click auto start. So as soon as the game starts, the animation starts. Then we can run this and we can see if it's working. There you go, everything looks good. Then let's go to our level. Now I'm gonna go back to my world. You can go back to any level that you have and we're just going to add that enemy scene to our game. Now as we're placing this enemy, you can see the benefit of having that marker 2D. And this would be just as beneficial if you had a enemy who was walking left to right pacing back and forth you could make that marker be out in front so you could see where they're going to go without having to constantly run the game and check. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add two of these enemies. Now we can run this. 
And we can see our enemies are flying up and down. Now, two things to notice right off the bat is one, they're kind of flying in sync, which looks really weird. And then two, we come to this side and stand here. They're still looking the other way. They don't actually see us. So now let's go back to our enemy scene and we're going to add a script to fix this. Let's click on the root of our enemy scene. We're going to add a script and I'm just going to call mine enemy. The first thing we're going to do is when the enemies are spawned, we're going to make sure they're not all spawned at zero of the animation spot and that they can spawn randomly. So we need to get a reference to our animation player. So on the animation player, we're going to skip and we're going to call the random F range function. It's going to grab a random flow anywhere from zero to four inclusive. So it can grab anywhere from this spot on the animation track. And if you remember, this animation track is the position. So anywhere on this spot will change the position of the enemy. Now, if we run this, you can see they don't spawn in sync anymore. Close that. We can run it again. They'll spawn at different points. Now let's add a little more logic so that the enemy can see the player and will look the other way when the player crosses them. So we added three more on-ready variables. We added one for the animated sprite, one for the vision area 2D, and then one for the collision shape of the vision area 2D. We have two script-wide variables. The first one is the alert, which is keeping track of whether or not the enemy can see the player. And one is going to keep track of the player. In our ready function, we're setting the collision shape radius to 100. And then we're going to add a body entered and body exited signal to the area 2D. In the physics process, we're just keeping track of whether or not the enemy sees the player. If the enemy does see the player, it's going to call the change direction function. The change direction function is just getting the position of the player and flipping the sprite accordingly. When the player enters the enemy area 2D, it's going to call on vision body entered. It's going to check to make sure the body is the player. And then it's going to set the alert variable to true. And then it's going to set the player variable to the body that entered this area, which if it triggers the if statement will be the player. If I go to my player script, I gave it a class name of player, which will be unique. So the enemy script will know that player equals that class. And then lastly, on the vision body exited function, going to reset the variables, the alert to false and the player to null. Now we can run this one last time and check this out. Now if I stand here, you can see they're flying. If I jump under them, you can see they both look the other way now. Twice again, and they switch back and forth. That's a simple way to add movement and a little bit of logic to your enemies to make them feel more alive. Oh, I suppose.